fictional version the table of nations 10 this is the account of shem ham and japheth noah's sons who themselves had sons after the flood the japhethites to the sons of japheth gomer magog madai javan tubal meshech and tiris three the sons of gomer ashkenaz Rifeth, and togamah for the sons of Javan, Elishar, Tarshish, the Kittites and the Rodonites, B. 5. From these the maritime peoples spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations, each with its own language. The Hamites 6. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put and Canaan. 7. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama and Sabteca. The sons of Rama, Sheba and Dedan. 8. Cush was the father, C. of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. 9. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, that is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. 10. The first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Uruk, Akkada, and Kalne. In D. Shina E. 11. From that land he went to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, F. Kala 12 and Rezin, which is between Nineveh and Kala, which is the great city. 13. Egypt was the father of the Luddites, Anamites, Leobites, Naphtuhites, 14. Paphrasites, Kasuhites, from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphtarites. 15. Canaan was the father of Sidon his firstborn, G, and of the Hittites, 16. Jebusites, Amorites, Piagashites, 17. Hivites, Archites, Sinites, 18. Arvadites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. Later the Canaanite clans scattered 19 and the borders of Canaan reached from Sidon toward Jera as far as Gaza, and then toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. 20 These are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages, in their territories and nations. The Semites' 21 sons were also born to Shem, whose older brother was H. Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the sons of Eber. 22 The sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arphax, Lud and Aram. 23 The sons of Aram, Uz, Hull, Gether and Meshech, I. 24 Arphax was the father of J, Shela, and Shela the father of Eber. 25 Two sons were born to Eber, one was named Peleg K, because in his time the earth was divided, his brother was named Joktan. 26 Joktan was the father of Almodad, Shelif, Hazamavath, Jera. 27 Hadoram, Uzal, Dikta. 28 Obal, Abamel, Sheba. 29 Ophir, Havilah and Jobab. All these were sons of Joktan. 30 The region where they lived stretched from Mesha towards Safar, in the eastern hill country. 31 These are the sons of Shem by their clans and languages, in their territories and nations. 32 These are the clans of Noah's sons, according to their lines of descent, within their nations. From these the nations spread out over the earth after the flood. Genesis chapter 11 New International Version The Tower of Babel 11 Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. 2 As people moved eastward, but they found a plain in Shinar, B, and settled there. 3 They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone, and tar for mortar. 4 Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. 6. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. 7. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. 8. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. 9. That is why it was called Babel, C, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. From Shem to Abram 10. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father, D, of Arphaxed. 11. And after he became the father of Arphaxed, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. 12. When Arphaxed had lived 35 years, he became the father of Shelah. 13. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxed lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. E. 14. When Shelah had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. 15. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. 16. When Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. 
17 and after he became the father of Peleg, Eva lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. 18 When Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Reu. 19 And after he became the father of Reu, Peleg lived 209 years and had other sons and daughters. 20 When Reu had lived 32 years, he became the father of Sarib. 21 And after he became the father of Sarib, Reu lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. 22 When Sarib had lived 30 years, he became the father of Nahor. 23 And after he became the father of Nahor, Sarib lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. 24 When Nahor had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah. 25 And after he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. 26 After Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. Abram's family 27 This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. 28 While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Yor of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. 29 Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, she was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. 30 Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. 31 Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Yor of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. 32 Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. Construction and Confusion Overview starting with Noah and his three sons, God begins to repopulate the world. But since the root of sin has not been removed, the fruit of sin soon becomes apparent again in proud, disobedient actions. As Noah's descendants seek to build a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, 11 to 4, God brings the project to a halt by confusing their speech, causing them to disperse over the face of the earth. Precisely as God had originally commanded, 9 to 1. Inside the funnel of history 10 to 1 minus 11 to 32 Genesis 10 to 11 is packed with historical data that reveals how the nations spread out over the earth in the first centuries after their language was supernaturally confused at Babel. The record narrows down to focus on Abram, whose family would become the conduit of God's revelation to humankind and the forefather of the Messiah. Inside looking up or looking down. 11 to 5 The Babel builders were proud of the mighty tower they thought would reach up to the heavens, 11 to 4. To them, it was a great architectural and spiritual achievement. But from God's viewpoint, 11 to 5, he had to come down, to even see it. Humanity's pinnacles are always most accurately assessed from a God's eye view. My daily walk even on television the sight is impressive. Delegates from around the world meet in the United Nations General Assembly to discuss solutions to international problems. Most wear headsets through which they hear the speaker's words translated into their own language, a reminder of the barriers that divide humanity even as they work together to bring unity. Centuries ago, humanity rebelled against God. Genesis chapter 11 paints a pathetic picture of disoriented people separating from one another in distrust and bewilderment. And that scene is not so far removed from today's world. The Babel of the ancient world foreshadows our current situation. Languages still divide, people are still distrustful of and perplexed by one another. And God's solution for humanity's chaos is still the same, the good news of sins forgiven in Jesus Christ. No doubt you've shared this with someone in English, have you ever shared it with someone who speaks a different language? If you have the opportunity to befriend someone from a culture different from yours, check out your local Christian bookstore's supply of books and scripture portions in his or her language. The best way to put an idea across is to wrap it up in a person.